Hello everyone, Master Zian one sister one here. And in this video, I want to talk about the latest update, HardUps0986 underscore 11 Mercury. So in this version, uh, we did quite a few bug updates, but one of the more major things is we added support for custom bevel profiles to be saved. So to show that in action, I'm going to take this plane and I'm going to press Alt X and we'll press D and we'll choose bisect and we'll just bisect, which will just split off the other half that isn't what we decided to keep. And I'll select a singular point and we'll just mark it. And I'm just bringing it all the way in until it's overpowered. And we can press Control Shift B and bring up the bevel helper. And with the bevel helper, we can choose to just begin setting up our profile here. And I've actually been experimenting lately with some really interesting profiles so first I'll uh, kind of bring things back to this kind of neutral state. And, you know, as I'm working, I'm setting all the points to vector because no one's got time for non-vector points. In fact, here's another one I can make vector. And, you know, once you start working near these endpoints, you start having to find yourself resetting these points. Sometimes I'll also copy a value and then paste it to make them uh, perfectly flat. I've been pondering a way to um, modify these things like in the 3D view, like bring up like a curve editor of sorts and just perfect it while looking at it in the view. But who knows? We'll just X that point to get rid of it. We'll make that one factor. That one's already factor. And we're just building a really interesting little profile here. And as you can see, making a profile can be a little bit of work, you know, just getting in here, just playing with profiles. But, you know, the results are so rewarding because you've basically modeled your bevel profile and, you know, it saves you a ton of work. So it really has changed the solenoid game. In fact, there's a driver that we've been experimenting with for keeping the segments exactly the same amount as the points in the bevel profile. So I do want to show that in this video. So let's say that we didn't want to have to adjust these points to get it just right. So I'm going to right click this and we're going to choose to add driver and we'll change this to use self and we'll just clear this out and we'll just type in len for length self dot custom profile dot points and then we just press enter. And we see that now it'll be set to exactly the amount of points that are set inside of profile. So as we further integrate this in the hops, I'm already talking about how I want to have a driver that sets this up automatically. But now that we have this, you can see that I'm able to just adjust this on the fly. Also notice that down here, there's nothing additional added to the UI in the modifier panel itself for bevel. But if we were to press control shift B, we could actually bring up the bevel helper where we do have this option for save and load profile. So if you were to want to do that, we could just go under our preferences and under your preferences for hard ops, using the latest version, you'll have something called profile folder and I actually have mine set to a location called profiles where I actually have just been saving my profiles. We'll just accept that and save our preferences. And so if we go back to our 3D view, of course, you can also access the bevel helper using the bevel helper icon at the top. We can just choose to save profile. We'll just jump to profiles and I'll just choose eight. It appears we don't have our handy dandy little plus minus increment buttons, but we probably do need them. And so now we've saved this profile. So just for fun, we will just make a new scene. And because I have such confidence in this due to me testing this over and over, we'll just select this point and just control click mark. I was about to bevel it manually. And so we've beveled this point and we'll just press control shift B, switch to custom, load our profile. And we'll load up the profile we just made. And since we're in hops tool, that means that whenever we hold control, we can bring up dots to adjust things. And so here we are just playing with this. So normally the next step from here would be to take this and screw it, which will spin it around. And we could just, you know, hit it with the old sharpen, 
However, we probably want to adjust the auto smooth, so I'll shift click sharpen to just jump to the auto smooth modal. And now we have it about where we want. But just like that, it's nothing to make a solenoid when you're able to save and load your profiles through the helper. And also, I may see about getting these options added to, actually it looks like in our custom helper, they are added. So if you press control tilde, and you go into the modifier panel for hops, there is an option to save and load profiles. So you should be able to save and load profiles, just bring them up at your own whim. And I've been using them for all sorts of interesting little experiments. So in the testing of this, I've been making these like little rooms using profiles. So I'll press Alt X, bring up the mirror and press D and change it to bisect. And we'll just bisect this and I'll delete that interior face. And we'll go ahead and just delete this face as well. And I'm just going to select this edge and we're just going to control click mark and that'll bring up this first area. And we're just going to go in our helper, change this to custom, load our profile that we had just created. And we'll do the same thing with up top here. We'll just control click mark and then we'll control click. And instead of even going into control tilde, you could also just control right click this new one go under custom and load your profile like so. So there's multiple ways to get around to it. I tried to make sure that users were able to get access to their profiles very quickly. However, we still have it integrated into be with where you can recall them during the process of setting up a bevel. So I selected this edge and I control clicked on mark in order to roll a bevel in here and we'll just roll some segments. And this is like the basic of the basis of how I make these uh, quick little corridors now. So with this piece made, we can press Alt X. We can see that it's on bisect, which we don't want. I'll press X to reset. And we'll just reset this over to the other side. And so with this in place, now we can just goof off with it. Me personally, I like grabbing the faces and just moving them out. Uh, I'll press Alt V B and just roll a blank light setup and I don't even have to look at what the light setup is because I just want the lights themselves but I see that I got a whole gang of area lights so we're just going to bring these in and I just want to show one of the new things that's also part of this update and that is replaceive blank light which is where you can place the lights and then just have it be replaced. So we'll just scale some of these elements down, bring them in, maybe a uh, clear track. You know, when we first made this, we didn't have tracking set up and that was because I wanted something kind of similar to this in the future. And so now I do see that, you know, we probably are going to have to do some sort of toggle to avoid tracking in the event you don't want your rotation done when you're messing with such an example, I mean, I could just go in here and clear my track and reset the light. And you're probably wondering what the heck does this have to do with beveling? It doesn't. We'll just give this a blank material. But now that I have a basic light setup going, I can press Alt V. And if we control click on blank light, when we scroll through, it actually changes the types of lights that's happening. There we go. For some reason it was, um, not, not connecting with my words, but hopefully this will give you a little something to experiment with, with this latest update. I'm always, um, you know, going through these little tool tests just to make sure everything's working optimally. But with that, we'll wrap this video up and I'll thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. You know what else is funny is if you do something like insert a cylinder, We'll just sharpen that and move it off to the side. You know, probably to show this right, we probably should get out of render mode. We'll apply to scale, but I'm gonna select this top area and we're just gonna control click mark in order to bevel that. And we'll just control right click, go under custom, load a quick profile. And now that we have our profile loaded, we might want to adjust our shading as well. But now that we have this piece here, you can see that, you know, all the details on the top. So another thing that's kind of fun is going and clicking on the reverse path, which will uh, just reverse the path. Now we have it off on the side, so I can just really play with this to my heart's content. 
However, you can see it getting a little unwieldy at the top. So we'll just scale this up and mirror it to the bottom using modifier. And then we'll just mirror it across this using modifier as well. And if we select both of these, we can alt them and just give them the same material. And we go back and look at this and we've just created this like detailed cylinder uh, with the quickness that we can still get in here and use hops tool to grab the dots and adjust. Of course, you know, we're breaking some clamp limits here, but I just wanted to just show this in a